take the lead on this drive. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Canadian Football Central, CFL content for the fans, by the fans, and we are here with Adam of CFL Mixtapes on Instagram, BC Lions fan. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we're here to talk about, we're here, we've got our mid-season report of the BC Lions, kind of looking into their situation this season, the pros, the cons, the good stuff, the bad, and I'm not going to lie, as a Bomber fan, a little excited to talk about that if we're talking recent. <laughs> My apologies, Adam. My apologies. But yeah, for the, anyone yeah, watching, fair. make sure you leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. You should have. I asked politely in many videos. And hit the little notification bell if you if you haven't already. So if we're looking at this team right now, obviously there's the, the performance last game, which I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I played sports all growing up. This is a game you just got to shake off and move on from. This is not – this is – it's one of those things where the, the Lions have been able to play some very, very good football in a lot of other games. This is a game where if you let this game get to your head, it's it's not going to do anything positive. So I think you just you got you got to move on and you just got to get back to, to where you are. So kind of what do you think? How do you think the team's going to respond from a game like that? And what can they do going into this game in Edmonton now with with Jake Dolagala? I mean... I mean, I don't, I don't expect much, honestly. Let me be honest, like, yeah, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, Cause, you know, I got Trey Ford, great player, hard to contain, contain him. But um, I mean, it was it was horrible last week, you know. Yeah, they had nothing on offense, absolutely nothing. I mean, obviously Edmonton's a little bit worse than Winnipeg. You know, it's fair to say. Yep. But um, I, I mean, I, I got no clue. I, I mean, Jake Dolagal is completely different than Vernon Adams, honestly. Oh, absolutely. Now, if if there is any, if there is anything good, I will say it's, I think Jake Dolagala, even though obviously he's not a, he's not a starting quarterback. Um, his performance in Saskatchewan was pretty decent enough in order to have some success. And you, and thankfully you guys are playing Edmonton. Now, now the, the, the bad news is that you're playing Edmonton right now and not two weeks ago in terms of where, where Edmonton is. And they definitely had a, a very, very strong performance that they're going to hold going into this game. But I don't think that means this game's a lost cause for BC. I think of this more so is that um, if we were looking at this matchup two weeks ago with the way that Ber- Vernon Adams Jr. was playing, with the way that Edmonton was playing, I think we would have talk, t- talked about this as a BC blowout. But now I think we're talking yeah, that sure. about this as a – it's going to be a competitive game. This is going to be a very uh, close game uh, and one that BC is going to want to come out with uh, just because, I mean, dropping two both to West Division teams, not something that you want to be able to do. Now, thankfully, I think where, where BC is – is doing well is in the sense of that. So they're tied with Saskatchewan now with a five and three record uh, for the top of the West. So I think that definitely helps them in the sense of that. It's never good to have these kinds of problems, but having these kinds of problems after already kind of building yourself up a bit means that you can afford to take a little bit of a hit. I mean, obviously it would be, it'd be lovely for BC um, to win the West and to have that, that spot that I, they, Let's be honest, they've been wanting that. They've been really wanting yeah, that spot from Winnipeg for, sure, for the past sure. few years, whether that was with Nathan Rourke, whether that was with Vernon Adams Jr. last year. They've been wanting that spot real bad. And so um, I think, but at, at the end of the day, with it, it, at the end of the day, you want home field advantage. But more than anything, you just got to make sure in that playoffs, because once you get into the playoffs, it is anybody's ball game. And so for sure. one of the things that I, I'm, I'm curious to see what you think about is kind of, how would you like if we're talking about kind of the interior uh, offense of BC? How would you kind of look at this this BC uh, uh, this BC offensive line as well as the running back situation with William Standback? Like overall this season, just overall their performance, just based on maybe expectations or or maybe not expectations, just overall performance. Like, what's your opinion on them as a Lions fan? I want to hear your perspective in that sense. I mean, the offensive line week one was. It was horrible. It was, it was, week one, who do we play? Toronto. It was it was horrible. I mean, they, they just got thrown around. I mean, but after that, I think I went six, no, I think four straight games out of sack. So I mean, yeah, they played horrible. Bounced back. They did like they, they did really well, honestly. And they got stand back to Baltimore, and he he was very like dynamic in those in those few weeks. But then lately, 
I mean, this seems Vernon Adams, a lot of second down. He's getting pressured and has nowhere to go with the ball and gets sacked. And also, William Standback, I don't know if you watched the Riders game a few weeks ago. I think he had nine carries for 11 yards. It was, yeah, I remember we were, Absolutely we were doing nothing. A, a review, and that was kind of something that, that really stood out to me where it was like, like nine, like 11 on nine carries. Like my goodness, like I, I expect more kind of uh, out of him. And and that's the thing we we've, we talked about it now when we did our mid season report for both Toronto and with Saskatchewan about how important it is that like the offensive line and the run game go very, very hand in hand. You can have the greatest running back in the world, but if you can't have an offensive line that can give him any resemblance of a whole, it's not going to matter. At least in terms of those interior runs, which William Standback he does yeah. a lot of those. Uh, those are the kind of run plays. He's he's running that and he's punching that through the house. And so I think it's really important to have that pa- uh, that proper run block. And so thankfully for BC, they have a quarterback who is very, very capable of being able to do pretty well when he's under pressure uh, with Vernon Adams Jr. I mean, when we had uh, we did a player interview with Micah Awe, and he was talking about how whenever Calgary's playing BC, the, the Vernon Adams Jr. is an absolute pain in the ass to deal with defensively as he's such a slippery yeah. quarterback. You can't keep a you can't keep a grasp on him. Every time you go to tackle him, it feels like he just like just right through the fingers and he's just he always gets through there. And so I think that that's kind of become a an important aspect of this BC offense and something where I'm curious to see exactly how well they respond with Jake Delagala back there, which he's he's a capable quarterback. But I, in terms of that slipperiness in being able to evade those tackles, uh, I don't have the same confidence in him as I do as Vernon Adams Jr. Mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah. Now, one now one thing that that has been uh, very important. Uh, my goodness, uh, McKinnis. He has just been crazy. Justin McKinnis. What a season from him. What? How? How do you? How do you feel about like? I mean, what is there to say about uh, about McKinnis this season from your perspective? I'm gonna be honest. This this kind of sounds like I'm a, I'm a hater, but oh. I mean, I, f- I feel like he's a little bit, a little bit overrated. Honestly, oh. big fan of him. He follows me, follows me on Instagram. I, I was about to say, I, I, I was about to say, didn't you release a mixtape? And he's and he's did, like, did, and he's did, in that one. Yeah, it feels like anyone in that spot in lines offense the past three years is doing what he's doing. To be honest, like Hatcher mm. last year, top three receiver in the league. You got, I think, I think it rhymes two years ago with Rourke or I think yeah. rhymes in that spot in 2022. And he had one of the best seasons that we've seen in the past few years. Yeah. And now McKinnis, right? And I think even the and year then, before that, that uh, was, that was a lucky, lucky spot. I think even like, it was, before. it was, you're right. Yeah. And then we saw last week, we got Hatcher back. So McKinnis went back to, you know, his old spot and didn't get a catch. He had no catch it last week. I mean, can't really. Really to be fair, I think that was I, I don't week, think that was a I don't think that was a McKinnis problem. I think that was a BC Lions it, it problem. Was. So. It was it was overall, but but still, yeah. I mean, that's true. He, he's balling out though. He's made some crazy plays. But I mean, I think at the end of the season, he's gonna want like two hundred fifty k. I'm gonna be honest. I think you gotta let him walk for that. I I, I I'm sorry, yeah. I, can't, I can't do it. It's it, and it's actually it's funny you bring up the contract talk because we had Elks heard on when we were talking about. Uh, Edmonton in their situation and about how we don't know the exact number, but it is rumored that Eugene Lewis is making somewhere around 300,000, which is just, which is crazy. Cause I remember not, it was four years ago when lucky whitehead first signed that deal in BC to come over. He was the highest paid receiver in the CFL and he is making $200,000 on the dot. Now I am no economist. However, if we're studying inflation, I don't think it's that bad. I don't think we went yeah. from two hundred thousand up to three hundred thousand in the span of four years. So it's it's just kind of crazy to see how overinflated some of these prices are um, for these receivers. And I think realistically, I think after what other teams seeing what's happened with the Eugene Lewis contract, I don't think he's been bad, but three hundred thousand is a lot. Like that's a lot Definitely of money. And Definitely. so I think I think other teams are going to take note of that. And so we're going to, we're going to see some of those contracts. Um, I'm, I'm not going to necessarily say get better because it typically almost never gets better, but I, I think it's going to, it's going to kind of cap off and we're not going to see those big contracts all the time um, for quite a few years to come probably. Well, if you, yeah, if you sure. think, 
if you think about it, the only reason why I know it's 300000 because in the offseason when Tim White left as a free agent before he re-signed with the team, he was trying to push for 300000 because he was the top uh, re- receiver in yards last year. He tried to price him off at 300000 and Ty Cats weren't even budging. And then they settled for two hundred and thirty. And then he still plays like I was I was about to say you guys you guys are probably real happy that you didn't take the first deal because I uh, I still don't think he's worth two hundred and thirty, to be honest. No, with you. like not with no, his performance. No player, no. Be, no. no player should be making more than two hundred thousand. Like everyone should be making less than a hundred. Are, are you talking are you talking receivers or yeah. No receiver should be more than I'd say hundred and eighty thousand. Okay, I, I I don't know if I quite agree that much in terms of I think but, it's the top like, on, two or but, three, but but you got to also include that's with that's just base without all your incentives like your bonuses and things like that. That's true. That's kind of a, a big important thing, um, contract wise. Now one one question I do have, and Rick, this kind of goes towards you, um, just because I want to see kind of how what we can expect from BC moving forward. We know the kind of the status of Vernon Adams Jr. Earliest he could be back is that game on the 18th against Winnipeg. Uh, Rick, can you pull up here actually the full injury list here for BC? Just the yes. current injury list and exactly see who's on the standard injury list. So who's in the this, this is based off of last week because we don't have the depth chart for this week against BC yet. Okay. But we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players on the sixth game. And two on the one game, and that's not including Vernon Adams either. So you got to add Vernon Vernon Adams to the list. Yeah. But there's Francis, Bemi, oh, Javon yeah, Katoy, Tebow. I feel like Adam's going to have to correct you on some names here. That's okay. <laughs> Andrew Pearson, Manny Rug. Rugambe, Rugambe, Chris Sugler, Jonah Tavai. Adam's getting then, a chuckle out of these mispronunciations. I mean, you and Hunter are the worst at pronouncing names. Oh, no, no, no. Don't limp it. Like, hey, I'm not great hey, here. Hey, listen. Hey, you're on another level, my friend. You're on another level. <laughs> Listen, coming from the guy who can't even pronounce Toronto's kicker's last name for Pete's sake. Okay, well, okay. To be fair, you know he's Lyram. I don't know what you're talking about. His first name's Lyram, and that's all we need to know. <laughs> and then Anu, Anu, Yuna, and then Josh Woods. Okay, okay. Now- but my question is... To Adam, with Vernon Adams out, when he comes back, do you think it's going to take him a couple of games before kind Vernon back Adams back goes back into that full form and tear, or do you think he'll be able to do it right away? I mean, I, I think it'll be quick, honestly. His yeah. legs aren't the huge reason of his, success, of his success this year. I mean, it's his pocket passing, honestly. And last year, he had the same like light and not not the same, but you know, he had, he had knee injury. And it seemed like he bounced back in a week. So, I mean, I, I don't think it'll be it'll be too crazy. Maybe a few drives at the start. But, yeah. I mean, I, I sense that it'll be, it'll be pretty quick. No, I, I agree with you there. Because, I mean, if, if we're looking at Vernon Adams Jr., and, and not even necessarily just with injuries, but time, any time that Vernon Adams Jr. has gone into a little bit of a slump, um, for a game or two or whatever, it's always been a game or two. It it really hasn't yeah. been uh, sustained. And so I, with Vernon Adams Jr. getting injured, and not only getting injured, getting it injured in a bad game. It was one of those things yeah. where, like, that BC was so unlucky at that point in the game. And it's just like it I, – I imagine it probably felt like, you know – the, the sun is expanding and the earth is about to fall into it. Like this cannot get possibly any worse. And so it, it's one of those things where I think when Vernon Adams Jr. comes back, it's one of those things where it, that that has to be one hell of a motivator, especially if it's one of those things where it's like that that was the last point at which he was in the team was when they had were kind of at, at rock bottom in, in terms of in terms of their performance. Uh, in any of their games this season. So I think you'll probably get mixed results uh, from Jake Dolagala, which might result in a win, which might result in a loss. That's kind of the nature of mixed results. Um, 
But I, I, I think that they should do uh, well when Vernon Adams Jr. comes back. Now, when Vernon Adams Jr. comes back, so let's say it's best case scenario, because best case scenario comes back for the game against Winnipeg. Does that mean win? No. What that does mean, and when I say win, when I say no, I don't mean that they're not winning. I mean that it's not a guarantee. And so I, I think that game will be a very, very close game. Uh, again, it's one of those things like, I, I d could Winnipeg win that game? They could. However, I, it, they will absolutely not win that game the way they won it the first time around over at Princess Auto Stadium. I hate saying that name. That's still stupid. I It's, it's IG Field. Um, but um, I think that'll be a, a really, really fun game, uh, which which is good because, I mean, we've seen a lot of boring games. I mean, I was watching – I was in the stands for that game at IG Field, and the entire time I'm thinking, man, as a Bomber fan, this game is great. If you're a fan of the Lions, if you're a fan of football, of any other team, watching paint dry is like a blood sport compared to this in terms of entertainment. Like we had one touchdown and just kicking and punts. And in the case of Jameson Sheehan over in Winnipeg, bad punts. And so it was one of those yeah. things where it was a boring game. It was a boring game of football. However, I mean, if we look into the upcoming schedule, this is something that me and Rick have kind of talked about numerous times um, numerous times over the course of the other videos we've done on the other teams and their, their mid seasons, uh, is about how this, this, this is about to get very interesting in the CFL. So BC, they play Edmonton this week, which this video will most likely be coming out after that game has happened. Uh, just cause we got a few in the tank, uh, either after this game has happened or just before somewhere like that. So they'll have the results of the BC Edmonton game. And for those watching, they'll then play Winnipeg on the 18th. Week 11, week 12, they then go to and they play away in Ottawa. That's a game where uh, it is a win it is a winnable game, but it will be difficult as Ottawa has been able to perform uh, pretty solid this season. Um, and then if we go into week 14, they'll play the Alouettes in what should be a very very good game. Uh, as long as both teams are going to be able to be decently healthy. Hopefully at this point, both Vernon Adams Jr. and Cody Vigero are back in the lineup. I'd be shocked if they weren't. And then the very next day, we have is, is Labor Day with the uh, – or, or not Labor Day. It is the, the Banjo Bowl is uh, followed by Toronto and Ottawa and then Calgary and Edmonton, all that – all in that same day. And then, yeah, a week prior when they play Ottawa, that's Labor Day. And I think Labor Day is probably where a lot of this is going to change in terms of us getting away from this kicking defensive style of game. And we're going to get back to those those high scoring kind of thrillers. And I'm not I'm not going to lie to you. I think that I think that favors BC with with a guy like Vernon Adams Jr. as kind of your commander in chief, your quarterback. Uh, I think that's the style of game. Uh, that probably will will suit the Lions the best. What do you, what do you kind of think on that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I, th I think so as well because it'll it'll be tough, honestly. Whoever we play, yeah, like, to be real. Um, at the start of the season, like maybe after the Hamilton game, I would be I would mean like, yeah, I don't I don't care who we play, we'll be anyone. But but now I don't know. It's <laughs> I mean I, we can win or lose any game. To be yeah. real, like. To be seems fair, even... I was about to say. To be fair, that that seems like the entire CFL as a whole. This, like, in terms of yeah. pickums, this this year has been horrible for me. It has been terrible, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like I'm like 15 and 21 or something like that. I was about I'm, to say, I me, I know I'm. I don't know if Rick is. I know I'm for sure sub 500 uh, on my pickums. Yeah. yeah, me too. I was about to say. Now, one thing we 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 haven't talked about yet. I want to know your opinion. How do you feel about the BC defense this season? I mean, going into this season, I, I mean, I, th I think it's it's better than what I thought. Honestly, okay. I mean, I think they're playing a lot of like bend but not break defense. It's yep. just it's just not timely defense. Is the thing like yeah. um, when when they need stops, they aren't getting it, and they're kind of just wasting the clock. Usually, like once a closer game, other teams just seem they can do whatever they want, waste clock on the line, but. I mean, it's not, it's not horrible. Um, I mean, going into the season, you didn't you didn't think you were going to win games for this defense. You just you just wanted them to be, I guess, I guess average at best. That's what we're doing. They're they're making some turnovers, but I mean, yeah, they're just there's middle middle of the pack defense. Their 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 uh, defensive line isn't great. I mean, I think it's the worst from what I've seen. 
Like they get no pressure at all. Somehow they're like leading the sacks or something. I, and and like that's that. the thing that something seems like that. crazy to me as this seems like such a stark contrast to like when Matthew Betts was there and this BC yeah. defense was just rolling on all four cylinders. And it just felt like yeah, the, this I mean, BC, BC defense was just running over offenses and just completely just catching quarterbacks and, by surprise in the backfield. Yeah. Like start of last year, remember that for like the first like four games of last year, their defense was unreal. Oh, it was they, incredible. It was it was crazy. I remember like against Edmonton that first game, they had like it was like what Winnipeg did at BC last week. It was yeah. like the home opener last year. It was, it was the same thing. It was it was unreal, but. I just, just fell off, honestly. Like, I don't really know exactly why, but I kind of took Matthew Betts for granted. Matthew Betts for granted, I guess, because yeah, I thought I thought he was he was all right. I mean, whatever, sixteen sacks he had last year. I I thought crazy. it was kind of over overshadowing. Like, I feel like it wasn't that much of a presence. He just made a lot of, like big, a lot, a lot of, not a lot, but it was a very flashy player. The and the, the plays that he did make, it, it, it got all the attention. Yeah, that. yeah, true. it was kind of, it was kind of like, like a like a loud a loud game that he didn't do too much in usually. But looking back, I mean, kinda, we kind of need something like that right now because we, yeah. we have, like, nobody other than Gary Peters that's showing up. So, yeah, no, yeah it's, it's, I mean, it's not horrible, but it could be it, better. It's funny. When, when I kind of think about – when I think about that situation, I think back to kind of what I said around the time was that uh, – BC fans uh, should have prayed that he that he signed in BC and not for the Lions because they prayed for the Lions and they signed with the wrong Lions. <laughs> and so uh, it, it's one of those things where BC is one of those teams where it's so – they're in such a strange spot in, in terms of that they've they've yeah. been on the cusp uh, of the West, but Winnipeg has been the, the, the showstopper in, in the West. I mean, I, like I'll put it this way. Like the past four seasons, Winnipeg has has won that West and gone to the Grey Cup game. And there's a year in that where where there was where there was no CFL season. For half a decade, yeah. Winnipeg has owned the West. And BC but BC has been on the cusp of it. They were the team where it was yeah. like the second the bombers start to collapse, that's probably the team taking that spot. And there's still very much a possibility they do. Absolutely. There's still no, sure, there, sure, like, sure. like it's one of those things where like, we talked a little bit about the, the kind of the, the grim scenarios for BC. They're still second place. Like, you know, like this is not, a, know, yeah. this is not a bad team. It's just kind of the trend right now is not, if you're a Lions no, fan, I, probably I not. First right open. now, honestly, I, I think, I think they're first in the West at the moment. Are they? But, it, yeah. It's first or second. Yeah. Cause I know they're tied. Um, I know they're tied with uh, points in Saskatchewan, so I don't know what the he what the hell the tiebreaker is. So, it, I think it's head to head, and I should have it right now, but still, it doesn't matter. It's like week ten, so yeah. yeah no, they're matter. they're still. Well, I mean, it's mid season report, so there's still half the season to go. So, yeah. uh, that will definitely only time will tell kind of how that continues. But it's one of those things where now that Winnipeg, it, Winnipeg can make the playoffs. However, I, th I don't think there's any doubt in our minds that Winnipeg is, if they're making the playoffs, they are not making it by winning the West. That is, that, that ship has sailed. That is, that is gone. And so it's very clear to me that either BC or Saskatchewan is coming out of this West division on top. I mean, I can see Calgary doing decent, maybe grabbing third in the West um, or even second in, in, in a good year. Uh, I just, I just, I don't see them going all the way up in grabbing that first spot. But I think that BC really has an opportunity to do, to do that. And I think one of the things that they've done well with is um, like, with, so actually here, Rick, are you able to check what their record is at home this season? I'm curious. Yes. Their record yeah, BC much. at home is three and O oh, and they're two and three on the road. I was about to say, I was pretty sure that they had done well at home and but, man, they've been able to, but they're four and two against the division. I see. I see. Because I was about to say one one of the things that BC has done uh, done a great job of from my memory was that they played very very well at home three and zero sounds like it um, and I think BC has done a fantastic job ever since they brought in this new ownership of being able to get people in the building oh yeah I sure. mean I, well and one of the guys that got in the building was Fifty Cent wow uh, you want to talk about getting people in the building that's a big were you at that game by the way like yeah I mean every game this year so how was that I gotta ask can be honest. It was, it was the best from the past three years, right? I, I loved it. I mean, my dad didn't, the older guys didn't, but I thought it was great. Like, on the field, everyone in the stadium. Yeah. I mean, and... Just the atmosphere, I imagine. Too. Like, for me, in my in my opinion, I, I'm a 50-cent fan, so I liked it. But I know a lot of people in the, in the stands didn't, but 
it was great. I know a lot of like people from my school just went just went to the concert and like yep. they just left after. And a lot of people did. But yeah. I mean, if you want people in your building, that's what you gotta do. Yeah. Although I will say, I think the amount like because everyone was kind of talking like there's a ton of people talking about about how, about how a lot of people left after that that show. However, I will say I think it is kind of over exaggerated how many people left in the sense of that I had a, I had a, actually Jake who was the uh, original uh, co-host of the show with me uh, who uh, just a few who a few years ago was here uh, before Rick was wonderfully co-hosting with me uh, he, he lives out in BC and so he was at that he was at that game and he sent me a video of the fourth quarter of the crowd and I was like still looks pretty full like it's it does it only looks like me you know maybe a few thousand left but I mean you're still pulling like 48 50,000 in that stadium even after those people had, had left and that's that's exactly what you need to do cuz there's going to be people that are that were just going to come for that show and then leave but the reason you do a show like that is so that way you can bring those people into the building and even if they don't stay for the whole game if they see kind of what what this team is all about especially with them being able to have a, a good game in front of them which was all the more important um it it was one of those things where that's that's how you get people coming to to games again, because I'll put it this way: in their upcoming game against Winnipeg, uh, there's no 50 percent performance there. They just opened up the upper bowl. I heard uh, for that game, yeah. uh, and so th I think that's being able to have that upper bowl open in BC Place. I think is absolutely massive for the Lions. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it, it's definitely is definitely something that uh, it's very very good to see because like. For a while, it, BC, like, it's been such so strange in terms of attendance with a lot of these teams. Like, I mean, Toronto, they're struggling, but, I mean, they've been struggling for a bit. Uh, although it's still crazy yeah. to imagine that they're struggling in the biggest city in Canada. Um, and BC at one point was kind of on a similar slope, uh, but absolutely not anymore. There, there, I think there's no question about uh, where the Lions are uh, in that regard. Anyways, what I was going to bring up was is that they have against uh, Winnipeg on August 18th at FamFest, they actually have a famous, I don't know if he's a Canadian icon. I know, Carter, you won't know who this is. Adam won't know who this is. I grew up watching this guy on CBC. You guys have Fred Penner coming and performing at BC, or... I wasn't going to say BC Place, but we know it's Safeway on Foods at BC Place. But and then you guys have the Jonas Brothers for Grey Cup coming for Grey Cup. It's like you guys are having like multiple performers, and you know, just only wish other people yeah. and other owners would be doing this. But my follow-up question was: If you could pick two people for each, who would be your two that have surprised you this year, and two people that have? Kind of disappointed to expectations. Um, there's an obvious answer for who's who surprised me is Justin McInnes. Um, that's one for sure. And and I mean, nobody expected this, right? Yeah. I mean, I thought he was gonna do good, but 720 yards in however many games is pretty crazy. And uh, another one who surprised me. Ah. Uh, let me, let me think. Um, well, while you're thinking of that, let's just throw this out there. No one's surprised of how many Canadians are in the top 10 for receiving. Oh, yeah. That's true. Got it done, yeah. Um, no one surprised me. Another one. I'll go uh, with Sean White, actually. Yeah. Uh, I thought, you know, he's getting older in age. I, I thought he couldn't keep, keep it up. But, man, he hasn't missed one all year. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, no, I think uh, I, mean, I think this is a, who's on that street too. Absolutely, I I think this is a great. I, I think this actually. Have, I, I I I like that point. I'm stumbling over my damn words. Uh, I appreciate you bringing that up, just in the sense of that. A lot of the times when we're we're talking about guys that may be surprised, it's guys that haven't been able to perform before that now are. But uh, you bring up a good point with kind of that. The the surprise isn't necessarily that. Um, that this is something we've never seen from Sean White, but that typically when it comes up to that kind of age, we normally see regression and we, and the progression we haven't, we haven't seen that regression yet. And so I think that's really, really important 
an important aspect uh, of BC is it's one of those things where it's like you you got to have a competent uh, compet- kicker, especially since, like, I mean, if we look at kicking around the league this year, uh, minus Bordas B, I'd say starting kickers in the CFL have had a pretty good year um, all in all. Because, I mean, I even remember it was felt like it was like two or three years ago. Not not Sean White, but it felt like almost everyone was just missing kicks. It felt like Lawler was inconsistent. It felt like Rene Paredes was actually having a little bit of trouble, which shocked me. Um, Sean White would have the occasional one. And it wasn't it wasn't even just that. He was missing conversions. It was like that was like a popular yeah. like trend like two or three years ago was just completely missing on the conversions. And now this year, that's just been a non-factor. And so I think it's kind of important to take that to, to not take that for granted. So I, I agree that Sean White's had a had a, uh, a great season for BC. I, so far. I will put this out here. One of my picks is I would say the defensive line has shocked me for BC, considering that you guys lost Barron and Betts, Betts who had 18 yeah. snacks last year. And they've put up uh, the fourth lowest points against this year. So I'm I'm just yep. like surprised that they've done as well as that they have. Yeah, and and two guys that are probably a little disappointed for me. I go number one would be um, Christian Covington from New Edition on D line from the NFL oh, from Vancouver. Oh, for 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 all the hype. Yeah, I mean NFL guy for like six seasons or something like that. I thought he was be like. You know, one of our best players, and he's barely staying in the rotation on, at the moment. Like, so, I mean, he's doing all right, but you know, from the NFL, I expect a little bit more. Yep. And uh, my second, a lot, of, a lot of Lions fans would agree with me, would be uh, Terry Williams, our returner. I mean, he's doing the bare minimum, honestly. But we saw some flashes last year. I don't know, if, like that Winnipeg game. Was it? Was it two years ago? Two years ago against Winnipeg at home. Uh, he had like 270 all-purpose yards, but this year, I mean, he he's had nothing. Yeah. I know he hasn't hon- him, but he's had. He has I nothing. honestly completely forgot that you guys still had him. I guess he hasn't yeah. made that much of, di- of a difference. I'm not gonna lie, if that. you forgot that they still had him and you and you knew they had him before, uh, that's not good. Because it's one of those yeah. things where it's like, especially like if, if you're like Adam, you're you're telling me about how he hasn't been impressive and whatnot. Obviously, well, I mean, I'm gonna say obviously he hasn't been impressive enough if he's seemingly invisible to Mr. Rick over here, who remembers all sorts of stuff when it comes to to CFL in terms of those transaction guys being on teams, all all that sort of stuff. And so I think like, and it's been such a, it's such an underrated position in the sense of like, I mean, look at um. Look at what Janarian Grant's doing over in Toronto with, you know, return touchdowns. It's one of those things where, you know, right now they're kind of, they still have that void of not really a bona fide starting quarterback. And, but they've been able to get, they're, they're still 500. They've been able to get wins um, because if you're able to, to, be, make the absolute most out of special teams, whether that was generic gra- grabbing touchdowns or grabbing a lot of yards that they could then do something with uh, and not having to rely a guy like Cameron Dukes run in the field, uh, going the whole field. Uh, that's huge. And so for BC, is is it one of those things that they, that they need that in terms of the capabilities they have? No, but I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, this, again, this is a team that's looking to get over the hump, the hump that has stopped them before the hump that has prevented them from getting to that great cup game that they've been so close to getting. And so I think I ironing out those kinds of mistakes uh, is going to be probably pretty important uh, for the lions moving forward, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of, kind of leave me near. We got, we got a few things left. And so I wanted to know what is your prediction for where the lions end up in the West? And actually you can just give your prediction for the West as a whole top to bottom. Um, where you think they'll line like, up. like record wise? Yeah, uh, or well, just standings wise, more so. Just order. Yeah, just order from um, first to down to fifth at the end of the season. Yeah, end of the season. Um, honestly, I'm gonna put BC. I think I think we're gonna finish one. I mean, like, like I I, I don't see Saskatchewan. Like, I, I can't see them like continuing the streak. You know, yep. like, they don't look too great. Um, and I think I think we're the best team by by far. It's just we're not playing at, you know, the level we can. And I feel like if we figure that out, and we probably will get close. I think I think we'll be a 12, 13 win team. Yeah. Um, and then, in and number two, I think for sure it's Saskatchewan. I don't think there's any debate in that. It's just the number three spot is what everyone wants to know. Yeah. And uh, I think it's gonna be Winnipeg because 
Calgary, I, I don't see it in Calgary. Jake Mayer, I, I can't count us out. No, nah, I, I, I don't. I don't see it. And I'm Winnipeg, not gonna lie, as a Bomber honest. fan, it feels kind of nice seeing everyone count out Winnipeg because it's like, oh, we've done it before. 2019, we squeaked in there and we squeaked our way up to the Great Cup. Then we brought ourselves home a ring. And so I kind of, I, I, I get excited. I, I like the idea of our team being able to prove some people wrong. And so, and I think the the Lions are a team that have some really big potential to do that in the sense of, again, I mean, this is no offense, but it's kind of some of the stigma around the Lions is great team, but right when they need to get that win, that's when it stops. And they yeah. haven't been able to do that. Um, but I have, I have no doubt of that, that, that this team is capable of doing that. So I think it'll be very yeah. interesting to see, uh, if they're able to complete on that, um, which I see Rick's going to say something. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So you, that's how you have them. But if tomorrow West finals to go to the gray cup down to Saskatchewan and BC, obviously I know Adam's going with BC because he's a season ticket holder, but Carter if you if tomorrow was the West final between those two teams, who do you think is going to Vancouver to represent the West? BC. Keep in mind, I, 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 BC. Keep, I, keep I, in mind, I, yeah. Keep in mind, Harris is playing and Adams is playing. Just BC. throwing that. I'm not going to lie. I think the added motivation of knowing you're hosting the Grey Cup and knowing that you have the chance that this is your chance to get over the hump. You don't have to play Win Winnipeg this time. All you got to do is you got to beat Saskatchewan, and you got to and, and and get to that game, and it's on your home turf. I can't think of more motivation than that. If you can't, I'll yeah. I'll put it this way: if BC if BC has that game and they don't win that game, I'm concerned because it's like, what more motivation do you need? Because that uh, that has to be it. Um, and so I I take BC in that in that circumstance. So yeah. I think that pretty much leaves us with one last thing, which is all things considered, if you compare this, the, the performance they've had up until this point, um, up until this point, compared to your expectation for their season up until this point, uh, what letter grade would you give them? I'll give it like a, like a B minus. Yeah. Um, I think definitely could have been A if they kept up what they did in Hamilton. Uh, not even that that much, but if they didn't have these last two weeks where they just played horrible, um, yeah. they'd definitely be an A. But going into the season, they're the Grey Cup favorites, I believe. For most for most people, for me for sure, I thought this was the year. I mean, I still I still think it, but they're just not showing yeah. consistency, right? And they're not <laughs> they're not doing as much as what people thought. And yeah, I mean, I'm 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 confident they can get to that level that people thought because we've seen it for a few I want to say games but for, for, for a few quarters for sure we've seen what they can do absolutely and uh yeah yeah I know actually it's funny I think I actually I'm going to give a, a slightly more generous stick I, th I I give them a B uh just a flat B in the sense of that like if we're if we're looking at this team they obviously they started red hot and they were able to go on on a bit of a, a bit of a tear and then they've started to slide a little bit as of recent but I mean, besides Toronto, when they went on their run for however many games, uh, just to blow it in the first game of the playoffs. Um, but besides besides Toronto, uh, maybe Winnipeg one of those years. Like you're gonna ha like that slide happens. It just it just does. And I think the Lions are very very fortunate here that that slide happens when their next game is against Edmonton. Again, obviously, yeah. kind of. Bad timing to be facing Edmonton based on the way Edmonton was performing in the Chris Jones Edmonton Elks. You now will have to deal with the Javarius Jacksons uh, um, over there in that game. But all in all, I think all things considered, uh, I, th I thought the, the D-line took a very big... I thought losing Matthew Betts was like, I mean, that, that was your switchblade. That was like, that was the secret weapon on that defensive line. And so I think I, I knew losing that was going to be a very big deal. Uh, for BC, and I think despite that, they've been able to you know be kind of middle of the pack defensively, and, and all in all, you you can you can win with that. You can that that is enough um, as long as your offensive weapons have ha have been dangerous. And so I think William Standback has been a little bit underwhelming than I, I think you'd hope, just in terms of inconsistencies, great games, yeah. then just kind of falls off a little bit. 
Uh, I think once you give them a bit more time to gel with that offensive line and be able to to, to really make something happen there, I think that will be really, really uh, crucial. And I think when Vernon Adams Jr. comes back in, uh, I know you're not going to like this, Sir Rick, but he uh, he may be able to get past Bo again to have most receiving yards in the league. He might. We'll have I to mean, see if Hamilton I mean, gets his shit together. Who, even if... If Hamilton doesn't get their shit together, Bo, we all know Bo can throw 300 multiple games. It's only been, what, two games this whole season that he's thrown under? Fair enough. Fair enough. Win, win lose, or draw, he can still throw 300. So all in all, what, what is your record uh, grade for the Lions here, Rick? Um, I, I gave, would say... I gave it a B. Adam gave him a B-. minus. I mean, considering that... What they're working with, I thought that they would have kept on that hot streak. Um, I'll probably give them a B as well. Hopefully, okay. you know, once Vernon and Adam comes back, they can run away from the rest of the pack yep. and show that they are not just that one team that they had when Rourke was in BC, but yeah, hopefully... Everyone gets healthier at BC. BC wants Hatcher. to get rid of the silver medal stigma. <laughs> yeah. That's what they want. And uh, I will say, I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that they're certainly capable of that. Um, mm -hmm. So is there anything else that we got here? Rick, do you got anything? or Not for me. Adam, anything you got there? <laughs> uh, I got one more question. Yeah. If, uh, if Nathan Rourke comes back to the Lions right now, or, or wants to, what would you do? Would you take Vernon or Nathan Rourke? I want to see what you guys um, think. Okay, so if Rourke's coming back... Like right, like today. I would say I want at least a two-year commitment from him before I get rid of Adams. Mm, good good choice. Although, here's another thing to keep in mind. Adams Jr. was your backup when Rourke was here. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things. I also don't think... I don't think Vernon Adams Jr. would be opposed to the idea of almost stepping aside slightly. I think Vernon Adams Jr. is a team player like that. I think he'd be willing to do that. But I agree with Rick about the two-year commitment. Uh, I think it's one of those things because where I, if you're going to spend the money, uh, you don't want it to be a one-and-done. And, I mean, we're talking about a situation where Vernon Adams Jr. is not like he's being completely incapable while Nathan Rourke is being gone. He's being that 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 consistent presence. So I'd say uh, I'd want a two-year commitment out of Nathan Rourke. I'll, I'll, here, I'll put it this way. Two-year commitment out of Nathan Rourke if it means that Vernon Adams Jr. is gone. If Vernon Adams Jr. is willing to kind of step to the side and give Nathan Rourke the spotlight, I don't have the two-year clause at Nathan Rourke. I just think that before, because, I mean, if you were to trade, if you sign Nathan Rourke to at least two- or three-year contract, you can trade Adams for pretty much anything. Oh, you could trade him for anything. Almost, I would say almost as much as what Hamilton got for Jeremiah Mazzoli. And Jeremiah Mazzoli wasn't even that great back in the day either. Like, we fleeced Montreal on that one. Like, you're looking at at least you mean two Ottawa? first round. No, when we traded him to Montreal and we got the two first oh, round yeah, draft shoot, picks. I forgot about that, yeah. no, And all of that. Like, I just think you can at least get two first round draft picks and then probably a key prospect or two. And then uh, although I'm not like, gonna lie, if you're if you're training Vernon Adams Jr., you want you also want a roster player. You don't just want well, that, picks. No, no, like what I mean by a couple of prospects, like I'm talking like up and ready players, players. that can yep. that can step into the lineup. Yep, like I'm talking fun. like Ontario Wilson type where they can step right into the lineup. Okay, okay. And I mean, okay, so you think. Harris is almost done in his career because he's 39. Jake Mayer, hey, who knows what he has left. Uh, I think Calgary would be the team accepting that trade if I'm being real. No, no but, but but what I'm saying is you could say, okay, Saskatchewan, Calgary, Winnipeg from the from the West because Edmonton has Trey Ford. Here, actually, um, I, I, actually, I have a, I have a fun uh, fantasy booking here. Um, BC Lions trade Vernon Adams Jr. to the Calgary Stampeders for De for Demario Houston and two first round picks. <laughs> I mean, it would 
honestly, if they were looking for talent, because let's just say that's a big piece to your secondary, and it's two first round picks no, or no, like top no. level prospect. I would, I w- what I was gonna say was, even if worst case scenario you don't get Houston, I would even try to plug out. And you think that I'm gonna be crazy with this, Jalen Philpot? Because here's the thing: if McInnes or Hollins I actually want that big, crazy for that. Want that big money in BC, and you don't, then you still got that Canadian receiver. Yep. And two first round draft picks, and a change of scenery of which then Jalen Philpot's career goes off the deep end and higher up, like his brothers. When you don't have a horrible. I was about to say he he wants he wants to he wants to get up to where Tyson Philpot's been. So. Yeah. Yeah. Come back home. I would like that. I would like that. There you go. Well. That was that was a fun question. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I think that I think that's all I got. Is there uh, Adam? Do you have any more fun questions like that? Is there anything else we got? <laughs> no. Nah. All right. I, well, I'm all right. I, I'm all right. I was gonna oh. say we can plug Adam's CFL mixtapes. No. Oh yeah, no, I'll I'll definitely be doing that. Now I will say I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, just keep in mind I cannot hear you. All right now, my, my my AirPods just died, so I'm just gonna finish this oh. up solo. Uh, so just wanted to thank Adam so much for coming on. Really appreciate you coming onto the show. Um, and also make sure you guys check out uh, CFL mixtapes on Instagram. And there's gonna be a link to that in the uh, description below. All the links down there. So make sure you guys follow that. Peace, love, and positivity. And we'll see you guys next time.